There we go. Hello, everybody. It's Lord Magicus. We're back. Happy holidays, everyone. Uh, yeah, and I hope you had a good Christmas or uh, Hanukkah or whatever holiday you celebrate during this time of year. Grafflenick, that's my personal favorite. Uh, it's a deep pull, but uh, extra points for anyone who knows about Grafflenick. Uh, but yeah, we're going to... As is holiday tradition on my channel, we are going to jam the Vintage Cube because I think it's one of the most fun limited formats that that this game has to offer. So let's do that. I absolutely am uh, very excited to get to do this again. So they, they always do this around this time of year, and I love streaming it. So can draft the most insane, ridiculous decks like storm or reanimator or like show and tell or like whatever the hell you feel like it's all great oh i don't like that at all like i'm gonna have to fix the sound later uh well we have a mox ruby so that's got to be like the pack one pick one right I feel like that's that's got to be it like you you have to take the moxes right that that's just easy and it's a red mox which means there's a lot of cool stuff that will work with it okay uh, can I like change this sound nonsense here? Is that gonna fix that? Okay. What do we got here? Pack one, pick one, the power nine. That's right. Okay, here we go. So a few interesting choices. Swift Spear. If we're gonna if we're gonna draft Ruby, like Swift Spear is not terrible because it's good for that. Um or, yeah, for the aggressive decks. Uh, Ancient Tomb is also very powerful for a lot of decks. Uh, Scape Shift seems like it's an interesting card, if, but you kind of... I don't know, it feels like that's going to be hard to build. Uh, Trespasser is pretty good, right? Can I like, make these bigger somehow? Yeah, I, 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 want, I want these to be a little bit more readable. Okay. Uh... Yeah, like, Swift Spear is just legitimately really good. Emperor is also fine. Uh, it, it's pretty strong. And Colligan's Command fits in just about any deck. Alright, I think Swift Spear has got it. It's like, it's a pretty easy choice, so... Sneak Attack is pretty awesome. I think we might take that. And maybe if we, we can hope for, like, something like Spellseeker to wheel, that would be pretty good to pair with this, probably. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't really think that there's a whole lot else that we're looking for here. Like, Tendrils is good if you want to go the Storm route, which is also not impossible with the Mox already. But, uh, Sneak Attack early, man. We can build a deck around this if we really would like to. I think, yeah, I haven't done a, a draft with this interface. Oh, you know what, hold on, I got it. I'm going to have to take the chat off here because I want the cards to be at least a little bit more visible. I will bring chat back afterwards when I'm still looking at it. Uh, let's see. Well, Emrakal is exactly the card that we want to put with Sneak Attack, so that's probably the play. Because if we can also pick up something like Show and Tell or Eureka, that will also work very well with that. Uh, yeah, just seeing other stuff. Yeah, I don't. There's nothing else that's like really close. I think it has to be Emrakal. Like, you sneak attack Emrakal, like, you're great, and we, we're... Oh, uh, there's the show and tell, so, uh, yeah, I guess we're doing that. We got Emrakal... Yeah, we're, like, building an actual fucking legacy show and tell deck. Whatever, like, now if we can just find, like, Gristlebrand, we're set. Um... Let's see... Kugal is not terrible for this. It's a thing that does kind of what we want to do here, so. Uh, Canal is also a very strong choice, too. We do need mana fixing for that. I think there's enough fatties where we we can get better, better fatties for this. But yeah, the mana fixing, getting, a, getting the uh, Spire Bluff, I think, is worth it, so. 
I want to say, like, Box Opal is, like, okay, but at the same time, I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to have enough artifacts to make it worse. Uh, Intuition? I feel like maybe that's okay. Because we, we can always cast the Intuition to get, like, one of our fatties if we have, like, the show and the sneak. We just have to have, like, three to find, and it doesn't really matter which one they give us, so... That's what, yeah, that, that looks like that's probably right to me. Alright. What else we got here? Um, Worm Coil Engine is definitely fine uh, because it works very well with Sneak Attack. So wait, this thing is a 9-9 nine nine when you unearth it? Is that how I'm reading this? I think I think we're just supposed to take Worm Coil. Alright, what do we get back here? Uh do do do. Uh so we cannot show and tell or sneak attack Ugin, sadly. It doesn't really work for this. So Time warp is not terrible. That might be the way to go with this. The tower doesn't help mana fix us for here. Yeah, the triome is the Esper one, so it's not really doing what we want, I think. I think we just take time warp. Alright, uh, this one is the uh, Abzan Triome, so I'm not sure about that. Sunken Ruins, like, I don't know, none of these are, like, terribly great for what we're trying to do. I mean, I guess I'm going to take the Sunken Ruins just in case we do black for some reason, but... I guess Odawara is probably fine. Uh, Talisman of Curiosity is probably okay. I don't actually know how T Valky interacts with uh, or the dual face cards with this, so I'm not sure about this, and I only have four seconds. So I guess the Talisman probably... Uh, let's see. We're not really doing Storm, so I don't think we want Mind's Desire. So the Flesh Gorger is probably it. Menace Lifelink, yeah, I mean, that, that seems like it's okay. Uh, I guess Emery? Yeah, the Prototype one is full size, yeah, that's true. So. And then we get whatever we get. Sure, Lightning Greaves. Alright, so here we go. That wasn't a bad first pack. Like, we got a pretty functional deck already. Now we just want to find ways to, like, find our win conditions for the most part. So, like, anything that's going to, like, draw us cards or search or, like, tutors, like, it's possible we could, like, splash black if we find, like, Vampiric Tutor or something. Um, let's see. Brazen Borrower is probably good here because we can play it in our deck. Uh, the Carnosaur. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's what we want to do. The Discover. Like, I mean, it's removal and it's also a 7 6 that, like, cascades. So. And, it, and its effect does work with both Show and Tell and Sneak Attack. So. Uh, the Seed Shark is also very good. Yeah, you're right. You know what? I didn't notice it there. That's probably got it. It like ah, there. I don't know. It's 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 really close for me. Um, because yeah, the 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 dino's removal. You can sneak and show it, and it discovers into like something else. But uh, the seed shark is just very generically powerful on its own. 
But yeah, you know what? I'm going to take the dinosaur because it can fit two different roles in our deck. Yeah, I like it. There's the Valakut, so whoever took Scapeshift, hope, want, they want to see this badly. Uh, what do we got here? Triplicate Titan. When it, Oh, this I think is exactly what we want, right? It is a 9-9 nine, nine Flying Vigilance Trample, and it's really good with Sneak Attack because you it's kind of like Worm Coil Engine, so I think we're... I think we want that. It's possible to like take something like Shallow Grave, but like the tight like Sneak Attack works best with this kind of card that generates value when the creature dies as well. So we get to smack them for nine and then keep nine in play. Jace is also very strong. So, but I th I think that the Titan is the gotta be gotta be it, right? All right, what do you got here? Uh, dig through time. That's that looks like a strong contender. Uh, what's this thing do? Create two tokens that are copies of a target non-creature permanent, except they're three three dragons. I, I I guess that's okay. Yeah, I think that we're taking dig through time. That seems to be the way to go. I mean, the Enlightened Tutor can find the Sneak Attack, or I guess it could also find a, a Hate Creature, so... It's not the worst idea to splash white and play the Enlightened Tutor, because it finds both halves of our combo. It can either find a piece or, it can, or a creature, or it can find Sneak Attack, but Dig Through Time can also probably do the same thing, so... Yeah, and it gets us two cards. Like, if it's digging seven cards deep, the chances it's going to find us what we want are pretty great. I think yeah, it's pretty close with both of them, but... Alright, what else we got here? Um, Planeswalkers do not really work well with our deck. Uh, Light Steel Colossus is an instant win if it connects. So there is that. Uh, yeah, lands are not bad either, like, Vis Prismatic Vista is also an option, so, like, should probably look and see, like, where are we at with creatures here. We have, like, five creatures, and, you know, the only other one that we really desperately want is, like, Gristlebrand, so. Yeah, you know, the Vista's probably a good idea, so that we have more mana fixing. The only reason I would consider Blight Steel is because it does win the game instantly if it, like, hits them, but we probably have enough where, you know, just taking mana fixing is not a bad idea. I think it's it's close. Uh, let's see here. Like, here we have Steam Vents. Like, that's got to be pretty good, right? Uh, the Oliphant is, like, oh, it's not terrible either. But yeah, the I think Steam Vents is the way to go. Same thing, Fiery Islet looks pretty good here. Um, we're not really an Echo deck, but... Yeah, you're, the deck is more or less done. Like, this also draws us a card if we need it badly. I, I mean, there's some small consideration to, like, Firebolt, but yeah, Fiery Islet. It's, like, more mana fixing, so let's just jam it. Uh, I guess Vendillion Clique can fit into our deck pretty nicely. Can check for permission. Yeah, so we can like go that before we go for our sneak attack. Miscalculation is pretty good here. Um, yeah, I don't think that anything else is beating that. All right, and then things are cycling back here, so. I hope so. I really want this deck to do well. So I guess what, like... Uh, we can finish with... I don't think we really need Shadow Spear, but, like, maybe just Ferocidon. Or, or the maybe we just take Splashing in case we want to play White. 
whatever. I'm, I'm willing to gamble on it just in case, like, Enlightened Tutor comes back for some reason. I don't really... I, I mean, I guess, like, this is kind of... None of these are terribly great for the deck, so uh, they're all kind of mid. Oops, shit, I accidentally clicked on that. Alright, well, we picked another talisman. Uh, Alright, I guess we get Blight Steel anyway, so whoopsies. We did not get to see what was in that other pack. Sure, we'll take Beseech, but I don't know that we're going to play it. Uh, sure, Bomat Courier. Yeah, I mean, it is fine ramp. Okay, so what do we got here? Um... I don't think there's anything that's, like, super necessary. Like, we could just take, like, another random fat creature here, but, like, I don't want to overdo it on them either. Yeah. No, none of this stuff, like, really stands out to me that strongly, but, I mean, I guess if we're gonna play white stuff, like, another talisman is not the worst idea. Urtide does have a really cool ability, so... Oh, uh, you know what? That's also true, because Urtide might let us cast the rest of our stuff, right? I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. Like, I like having the interaction, so I guess I did go with Fire Blast here. Um, do, 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 do. Anything that we absolutely need here? I mean, Counterspell seems like that's probably fine. I don't imagine I'll be sad to have Counterspell on hand. I mean, these are all, like, random cards, but, yeah, I, th I think I just want Counterspell. Alright, what do we got here? Uh, the Batter Skull's there. I think that we saw the Stoneforge going around, too, so, I don't know. We could take it. It's not a terrible choice. Uh, Entomb? That doesn't really help us. Draw two cards and then discard a card. Uh, it's a vehicle. Yeah. It's... Batter Skull being repeatable is, I don't know, it's... Virtue? Like, we're not... I don't know if we were playing black, right? I think I kind of... I think I kind of just want Batter Skull. It's fine if we don't get the Stoneforge, but it's also pretty good if we do pick it up, too. Oh, we get Gristlebrand, right? We have to just, like, take it, because that's, like, the one card that we uh, don't have in this deck yet, so... <laughs> this is... This has to be correct, doesn't it? I mean, Faithless Looting is also probably really good here. Ooh, yeah. Then you know what? Looting might be the way to go. Oh, fuck. Like, these are both really good. Uh, looting digs us closer to our combo pieces. Like, yeah, we have enough, like, things to put into play, probably. Like, 
Yeah, it's it's close. Uh, I mean, if the land wheels, then we're probably taking the land, but looting feels like that's got to... I, I think this is what we need, because yeah, the fatties are more generic, but like we only have two of these, and we need to dig to them as much as possible, so I'm taking the looting. Alright, um... Oh, bring to light? I Actually, I think we want bring to light, right? Because if we cast it for red, blue, green, then we get to cast show and tell with it. So this is effectively an extra copy of show and tell. And uh, we, we have the talisman of curiosity to help with the green costs. Uh, and... I don't know, that's where I'm leaning with this. I think that this is probably it. Yeah, I think that that's got to be correct. Uh, yeah, Ulamog, uh, Shark type, yeah, that's good. Uh, Frantic Search is also pretty good, too. It does kind of what we want to do here. I am close for me between Frantic Search and Shark Typhoon. Yeah, I think that it's probably Search as well. We just took Faithless Looting for the same reason, so we probably want that too. Uh, Island Mountain Plains, that's maybe we want that. Lavamancer is also fine. Ashen Rider is fine. Probably just the Triome. Crab Clue. Yeah, I, th I think the Triome probably. Uh, do -do -do. Let's see. Kind of tempted to just take Field of the Dead. We have enough, like, different lands where, like, we might actually just be able to do this for free. I don't really feel like the rest of these are very strongly important, so I'm just going to take field. Yeah, when in doubt, lands is usually a pretty good way to go about this. Um, I don't want to overdo it on, like, huge things, but at the same time, uh, Urtai is still probably really good. I don't really think the, the rest of it matters that much. You really want to take Brutality? Alright, you know what? I'm going to trust you in this. Yeah, alright. I mean, that's fair. I don't know if we're going to find ourselves in black, but it's possible, I guess. It is pretty good, so we'll say maybe. Uh, yeah, I was looking at Baleful Mastery here, so... Premier, it's it's primo, yeah. All right, what else do we got? I mean, if we end up in black, then virtue also probably makes sense too, right? So, because it is also removal. So, uh, well, there's restless vents can help us play the black here, so I guess we're gonna take that. Exile a black card. Is Contagion what we want? Or Goblin Engineer? I mean, I guess we're... Yeah, we're, we took Engineer. Uh, and... I guess we'll take Ulamog, and uh, we're probably not playing that guy. Well, okay. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's get rid of some stuff here and uh, figure it out.
let's just, I guess, look at what our core is going to look like. Okay, yeah, those are all probably things. Uh, well, we're pretty reliant in finding like sneak and show or the sneak attack, or I mean, or show and tell or the sneak attack. So let's see. We have. I think we're gonna be playing that. We have, what, 21 non-land so far, so. Probably take out Field of the Dead here. I don't, yeah, I mean. Let's see, if we take out the black stuff, so. So we're at lands here, six. 11 more lands so that would give us two more cards to put in here if we keep all the fatties at the moment maybe we have to get rid of some of them i mean yeah the talismans for helping to ramp into the larger things are probably good because like we can reasonably cast stuff like worm coil engine so that's fine so i guess yeah. Put these all together to see, like, we probably have enough stuff to. Oops, uh, I'll put these in this pile. Yeah, we have like seven things, and one of them is like also a different thing, so. that That's probably fine. Like, any one of these is probably going to win the game on its own. Uh, maybe the Flesh Gorger is, like, not that impressive. <laughs> but, like, yeah, the Titans are all probably fine. Probably need to play this Bring to Light. Guess what? We play like one more card here. We have one, yeah, we have one mock, so actually we can put in, I think, like two more cards. Their mocks is effectively a land. Yeah, so we, we can reasonably put in two more of these up here. Do, do, do. I'm thinking about like Batter Skull or Beaumont Courier is actually probably okay. <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to have enough artifacts for Emery to really be useful. I mean, Batter Skull is also fine. We could put that we Batter Skull is actually castable. Uh, the engineer doesn't really help us with like it doesn't put anything cool into play. But I mean, yeah, Batter Skull seems like that's oh, that's an achievable card that like can if we have to play a fair game, like Batter Skull can do that. Yeah, I mean, what? Where's is, is there? There should be like a button to fill this with lands, isn't there? Let's 
something like this. Oh, wait, no. Uh, we need one more. Oh, fuck. All right. All right, well, whatever. These go off into here. But uh, this is what we're looking at, right? So Vista can find green. The forest is a green source. Talisman is a green source. Should we have, like, maybe one more forest just in case we have the bring delight? Seems like that could be reasonable. We have three right now, but the spell is so important that it might be worth playing a fourth green source. For the red, like, for red, we only really need one red, right? So we have enough red sources as it is, probably. We can reasonably cut, like, a mountain and play another forest. I think something like this works. Give this a try. Uh, I mean, so we got... What, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, like, I think this is good. I think, basically, we just need to find one of our two important cards here, or bring Delight to find Show and Tell, and that should do the trick. And, I mean, our, our backup plan is to just to hope to cast, like, Batter Skull and Worm Coil Engine and get us there. All right, let's go. I would have liked to have a little bit more stuff in here, but I guess this should be okay. Now, you know, one thing I didn't consider is that maybe Emery will help fuel dig through time a little bit. But also, Emery comes with the risk of accidentally milling our important card, so I don't know, maybe not that... At least with, like, Faithless Looting, we can fuel Dig Through Time and make sure we're not accidentally discarding something important. Mulligan aggressively is, yeah, probably important. You're right. But if, if we get through this uh, first draft, then I'm leaving open the possibility of doing a second one then, too. I think this deck is fun. It's, it doesn't, it's definitely not like the strongest deck I've ever drafted here, but I don't think I've ever drafted straight sneak attack show and tell. I've definitely had, I've had show and tell Eureka before, which was really, really good. But that also had a backup plan of like actual ramp spells into stuff like questing beast. So there was like a legitimate aggro plan that was with this, where this is like way more all in on the actual combo itself. But I mean... The combo itself is good. It's just we got to be careful about stuff like Force of Will. So we may not want. I don't. Know, we don't. We don't necessarily want to jam it right away if we have like counter spell or miscalculation to back it up. But and hopefully playing like the talismans can help us get to maybe five mana to deploy like show and tell plus counter spell. I would love to play first. Oh, I hate that sound, but uh, we have show and tell, and uh, we have something to put into play with it, so the bring to light is not really going to help us very much, but I guess we're going to keep this. Oh, I have to put the chat back up. Hold on. I did promise that I, I would do that afterwards, so uh, I guess that we just put the Vista in play, and we'll get we'll get a forest with it. I don't like the sound effects. We gotta, like, turn this shit off. No, cards go away. <laughs> sure. Uh, and we're up against a white deck, which means the only thing we have to really worry about is Containment Priest, but honestly, Ulmog is probably gonna be good enough on its own, so... Yeah, uh, probably here we just play Island Pass. 
Yeah. I mean, it would suck if they had, like, swords to plowshares or something. Yeah, but Containment Priest is also an option. Like, we don't really want to have to deal with it. Alright, well, we don't have to deal with Containment Priest, at least. Uh, oh, that's nothing. Showing the dino is also very... It's possible because we can discover into something with it, so... Oh, well, bully. We just have fucking everything today. Yeah, so, uh, this is this will be fine, because then we can sneak attack in Ulamog, and then just, just, yeah, fuck them up. Um, I definitely want this Annihilator trigger, so yeah, we're gonna go Dinosaur. If they have, like, Solitude or something, they'll use it on the, on the Dinosaur, and then sneak attack should just crush them. All right, uh, fire the lasers. I mean, sure, they have a Steel Seraph. Uh, what do we get here? Batter Skull? Yes, I would love to cast the Batter Skull. That's fantastic. The best thing we could draw is probably, like, Mox Ruby, because then we can deploy Sneak Attack and just use it right away. And that, yeah, it's we get to know before we put Ulamog in if they have Containment Priest or not, so. Kithian? Okay, sure. You're going to give that flying, I take it? They're just going to try to race me? Alright, well... So 3-3, three, three, and I assume they give it life... Or they have to give it flying, right? Because they're going to attack for 8 in the air. Yeah. But we gain four life back from Batter Skull, which hopefully is a thing. Uh, they, they swords the dinosaurs. Okay, whatever. Batter Skull gains us some life. Almost clicked through that. Yeah, it gives us a ton of breathing room, so yeah, we just jam sneak attack now. Next turn, we can then activate it, and if they try to uh, put in Containment Priest, we can just miscalculate and then win. Batter Skull wants very, desperate, uh, very desperately to block this Kithian if given the chance. Uh, yeah, well, the Caracas, if they tap it, yeah. Otherwise, like, it could be less great. Yeah, we, well, we, yeah, that, that's true. We can't do this yet because of Caracas. Uh, yeah, it's true. If they do bounce it, like, we still get the Annihilator trigger, so, uh, yeah, that's fair. We do have Red Red up. So they're attacking us for another 9 in the air. Whatever. That doesn't matter. It's true. Annihilator's just gonna wreck them anyway. You're, you're absolutely correct. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, like they can't cast like solitude here or what I'm ass I I think solitude's in the cube, I don't even know, but we have like miscalculation backup, so no matter what they do, we're probably safe here. Yes, yeah, you're correct. I had to had to stop here because it took it away since the last time that I uh had it, so good good call out chat. <laughs> Because if they do bounce it, we need to have priority to use the uh, sneak attack again on it. Here they'll just like lose their entire board. Or like they lose their lands, which is like actually worse for them, I think. But keeping these two creatures, they're not going to race these, right? I don't think so, anyway. I'm going to gain like a bunch of life and they're going to be almost dead. Okay. Okay, they, they they saw the line. Yeah, to just do it again. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I don't know if we really want to change anything here. I think this deck is probably about as good as it's gonna get. Like, the sideboard doesn't look terribly important to me. So let's go. This is not an unreasonable hand. Um, But I mean I mean we can dig here a little bit. Yeah, you're correct. If they had done it before I fixed the stop, then like we actually would have just died and cried deeply. Uh so what? We have like Beaumont and we can like try to frantic search to find this, but I don't know if that's good enough. I probably for this kind of deck, maybe we want to mulligan a little bit to try to find this thing, so. Uh I mean I think that we're supposed to keep this. Sure. Um, what do we get rid of here? I think we want to keep the. La I feel like I want. I want, maybe want either the batter skull or the worm coil go away. And it seems less likely that worm coil is going to be the one. So I'm going to keep. I'm, I'm going to keep batter skull and get rid of worm coil. I think I want the frantic because like. I don't, I don't feel like Counterspell is going to curve us up into Batter Skull. That's not going to be enough. See, look, we picked up Emrakul anyway, so now, like, we have, we have, the, the thing we have most of in the deck are fatty, so, like, we're more likely to draw more of those. So if we find our combo piece, then we're, you know, with, with Frantic Search, and we, we have something to put into play with it. Like, our deck is generally not going to win a lot of fair matches here. Like, I think we probably need to do unfair things. Yeah, that's not great. So I assume that they probably take Counterspell, right? I don't think anything else really matters. I, I They could take Frantic Search, but I don't think it's worth I think they should just take Counterspell. Yeah, that makes sense. They know about that, so I guess it's just pass. They know about everything up to Frantic Search. Them being on the play, like, and us not having the best starting hands, like, yeah. They have a game going, we don't at the moment, so. But that could change.
We could just like find show and tell this turn and like show in an Emrakal and that could just be the game. Well, okay, so it's not going to be this turn because Thalia is ensuring it's going to be at least one more turn. Uh, they know about mountains, so we'll play that and uh, pass. You know, we, we still have at least like another turn or two, I think, to probably like one more turn to find it, so. So what, that's six, eight, nine. I think, we, yeah, if we find it next turn, we still survive. I mean, we got full show and tell, they got full death and taxes, so, like, these things happen. It's whatever it is, yeah. Our goal is to just not die this turn. That's it. They already found a Mox Pearl, so I don't know what else they're going to find off of this saga that's going to matter. Is the answer, uh, they failed to find a card, so nothing. Alright, so if we find show and tell this turn, we can probably, like, still win this game, but it has to be this turn. Actually, no, I don't know if it's enough, because Thali is still here, so, uh, oof, that could, yeah, we have, I think we might actually just be dead. I think we have to rip show and tell off the top, like, Frantic Search is not castable. Uh, intuition's not going to do it. Yeah, no, we can't. Um, which means I don't think that there's anything we can do, and there's no point in showing them any of the rest of these cards, because we're just dead, so. We have to draw it exactly off the top there, and then put in... No, even even putting in Emrakul that turn would not have been enough, so, yeah. Yeah, it, it was just, uh, them being on the play with enough of a curve, it's like, yeah. Yeah, well, we tried. Yeah, they, they put too many creatures in play, so, like, we couldn't, like, block enough to live. But we get to be on the play this time, so hopefully that'll be a little bit better. If we can go, like, you know, fucking turn one Ruby into, like, a Talisman, that would be awesome. Damn it. Ah, uh, I... <laughs> I, I really want to keep this, but there's no way we're actually casting the fucking sneak attack with this hand, so. I think that we're supposed to keep this one. We have to play Triome, and then we can play Faithless Looting on turn two, and then hopefully find something. Yeah, I agree. Uh, get rid of Island. I don't see it reasonably getting any better. And if we find, like, show and tell, this will be fine. Or, like, sneak attack, so. Guess Faithless Looting first. Uh, those are not irrelevant cards. The Bring to Light does find us what we want. But we need the land, so... Probably discard a land and then we know they have swords to plowshares, so there is some value in discover five, maybe finding like batter skull or something. But I'm not sure if the titan is better than the carnosaur. Flying vigilance and trample is pretty good if because yeah, if we can get to this bring to light. Uh, yeah, it is. It's an interaction too. Is it? Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're getting rid of Titan and Island. All right, and then we just play like Spire Bluff and pass.
They don't have anything yet. That's interesting. Um, sure. Forests pass. Yeah, we know they have swords. So, like, if we can hit Batter Skull or something like that again off of the Carnosaur, that's good. But it's, I mean, more, it's also possible to just hit, like, a Counterspell or something. Sure. There's nothing I can do about this. I mean, it is quite possible that they have, like, uh, swords in their hand. Uh, sure, that's fine. We have a counter spell up at the moment, so... If we draw, like, Emrakul, that would be fantastic. Or actually, Faithless Loot... Or, I mean, um... Uh, we could have flashback Faithless Looting this turn, but I think holding up Miscalculation is better. I mean, we might just get to the point where we can actually hard cast this Carnosaur, and I mean, that's very reasonable, too. I kind of like just... I don't know, like, looting and then what? We can discard, like, this and... Uh, looting plus miscalculation seems like maybe that's better... Yeah, like, we can actually just hard cast this, and that's also fine. But, so maybe we just, like, miscalculate and then just and, and cast looting? Yeah. Uh, hold on. I want to keep up basic lands just in case they have, like, wasteland or something like that, so... Bring Delight can find anything for four. Okay, so yeah, this is pointless. So we just discard Island Island. Alright. So yeah, we just uh, are hard casting our guy next turn. And then... Yeah, for four mana, find uh, something. I just really want them to tap out or for something relevant here. Come on, one more mana. One more. Now they're prototyping it. Am I so, like, I miscalculating this doesn't actually do anything, right? So, whatever. Like, we can cycle it too, that's also fair. Yeah. If they don't do anything cycling, it makes sense. I mean, intuition's okay, but we don't really need it. Uh, I mean, worm coil's also quite fine, so... Gives us something to do next turn. I mean, I think we're probably at the point where we're like, we're like beating them for the most part, so. Now if we find show and tell, we have something to put into play. Uh, sure, we'll cast Beaumont Courier. Uh, there's no point in attacking into this at the moment, so. Yeah, I agree. Taking over with Worm Coil is a very good plan here. Deal. Alright, that's like... that por Portable Hole does almost nothing against my deck, so I am fine with that. Yeah, we don't really have much else to put in that slot, so...
yeah, we're definitely just like windmill slamming this worm coil engine. And then I think after that, what we want to do is maybe cast intuition, find some Eldrazi's and then like bring to light for the show and tell. But we have to stabilize our life total here. Ooh, that's actually pretty good too. Uh, so we're at what? Seven mana? Not enough to do both of these yet, but if we draw another land, Caracas. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, we have to find uh, non-legendary things. Um, all right, well, let's do this. We're not dead here yet, but Worm Coil can keep us alive. So, uh, I think I need both of these to block this turn. Hmm. So if I attack with this, um, they're going to, what, give this plus one, so they'll be attacking for eight in the air, and then I have to be able to block... No, actually, worm... if Worm Coil blocks one of these, I'm alive, right? So it doesn't matter. So I guess attacking with the Carnosaur makes sense. If they have Swords to Plowshares, I'm dead no matter what I do, so... So I think, yeah, we just have to attack and try to kill them. I don't think that they're going to be able to attack us for 10 in the air. Yeah, we, we do lose to pretty much every removal spell, so... We just have to try to kill them. I mean, mono white is usually the thing that's hard to beat when you're playing like combo decks here, so. Yeah, well, you're right. It's technically alive, but yeah, not really, so. Oh, fuck. All right, well, that's going to kill us. That That's going to let them actually attack for enough flying damage to kill us. I, I can't the nothing I did could like beat that. Yeah, alright, you got it, opponent. Taxes is hard when you're playing combo, so we did our best. I mean we like we were close, we could have got there, but our hand just was not quite fast enough, so but I mean the batter skull looks like that was probably a, a good include, so there, there is that. All right, let's go. Come on, opponents. Let's go. Find somebody play. Oh, there we go. Let's go. Uh, there's Sneak Attack and Emrakul, so I think that we are forced to keep this. This hand's actually very good. Go Mountain, Ruby, Talisman, that's exactly what we want to do here. <clears throat> we just want to draw land and slam Sneak Attack. And then Emrakul will basically just kill them. Uh, it's not a land. Alright. Well, Carnosaur is still an option if they put something into play. We need another mana source. Alright, well, Carnosaur is not going to deal with that. Dino Boy first probably makes sense. Uh, we can search for three lands with this, right? Which we probably want to do so we can play one.
I just get like three islands or yeah we have a green source already for the bring the light so cool so now if we draw land next turn we can actually just uh emmer call them and failing that, then we have the backup plan of bring to light for the next turn. If they have, like, counterspell for, or, or for sneak attack. Sure. You got it, man. Uh, well, I guess we're just jamming it and hoping for the best. Mana drain? That's bullshit. We had to try it, but we have, again, if we have the land, we can just bring to light show and tell, so. Yeah, fucking rude. The, I mean, we could have cleaked them first, that's, that's true. I mean, it's not unreasonable for us to do that now, but... See how far behind we are here. If it's like Primeval Titan or something, then... Oh, that's bad. Yeah, that's really bad. Uh, I think we're probably dead. <laughs> I don't think we're getting out of this. Unless we top deck exactly like Show and Tell. Oh, yeah, that we're fucked. Uh, whoopsie. Yeah, it's, I don't think... If we cliqued, like, I don't know how much it would have helped here. Well, they didn't find the land, so they wouldn't have been yeah they wouldn't have been able to play this yet. They only had it because of mana drain. So yeah, it's, I guess we had to take the mana drain first. But they would have just mana drained the clique, right? So I don't think it would have again. It wouldn't really have mattered. So they would have still done exactly the same thing. And this is very dangerous. They kept two cards. All right, well, I guess we're cliquing them this time. Just hope they can't find a way to kill their own creature. That would be just devastating. We want to clique them and then try to bring to light and hope that's good enough. Because we're not going to get another turn after that. We need Emrakul to get into play so it can like block this thing. And once, once it's in play, nothing else really matters, so... Take this, go to seven. So we're gonna go to six because of the talisman here. So this is kind. This kind of has to work, or we're dead. Sure. Okay, play to land here, uh, click, all right, do your job, click.
It looks like it. All right, is it gonna is it gonna be a thing? Do we have like force of will? All right. I mean, if they didn't have a counter for this, like, it almost kind of makes me want to clique myself in order to draw up the land that we need. Hmm. No, I think I have to choose them. Like, there's way too many ways this goes wrong. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I don't think I want them having Crater Hoof Behemoth. Or Mystic Confluence, for that matter. Uh, Confluence is going to ruin our entire lives, right? We have to get rid of that, but Crater Hoof is also going to ruin our whole life. It doesn't have Trample, though, so, like... And I, it's only going to be a 5 attacking. I can block the... Yeah, I can block the Woodfall with Emrakul. Oh, uh, that's true. They, they, they can, uh, they can breach it on their turn. Um, and gain trample. Fuck. Well, the thing is, if we don't take Mystic Confluence, we're dead anyway because they're just gonna counter it. So, yeah. How do we like not die here? If we draw the land, we can play Batter Skull and maybe survive that way, gaining some life back. Uh, let me think here. No, because that's not going to work either, because Confluence can just counter it and bounce the clique back to my hand. I'm at 6 life, so this thing is trample. It's going to kill me no matter what. Um, yeah, I don't think it actually matters what I take right now. I think what I have to do is take the Confluence and hope that they fuck up and put the Crater Hoof in play. So... If they put the Crater Hoof in play off of the uh, Show and Tell, then I might have a chance. Uh, well, it doesn't matter because we didn't draw the thing we needed here, so. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, that's right. We don't. No, this. Okay, so no, we still have a chance. Um, all right. Ah. Uh... All right, actually, the other option is this thing ha has lifelink, right? So, so we know we know that they have crater hoof in hand, so all their creatures are going to get plus three, plus three, and trample. Ooh, that's terrible. So this will be attacking for nine, and that's going to be attacking for eight. But we can effectively gain seven life. Or we can well, we're going to gain like six life back with this. Plus soak up. So this will be like it can absorb 11. I think we're actually technically alive with the flesh gorger if we put it in play. And then I guess it's possible that we could draw like sneak attack and kill them like that. It is the only option, I agree, but uh. Yeah, because this thing, yeah, it'll gain it. So, we, yeah, we'll go back up to 12, and then we can block up to 6 damage here. So, that should be enough to not die. And if we, yeah, again, if we if we have to draw Sneak Attack and then Ember Call them while the shields are down, I think. That's, that's not great. Uh, they, must, they still probably have enough stuff to sacrifice, though. Like, Annihilator 6 wouldn't even save me here. Oh, yeah, it's in the yard, so, like, that's not even an option. Uh, wow. Um, all right, I guess we don't we don't really have a choice, right? We have to get this Flesh Gorger in play. Uh, the other, the only other option is playing Batter Skull, which, but it only, Batter Skull only soaks up, like, four. I don't think that's enough. We go, yeah, we go to 9 life, and then we can block 5 damage, but... So... can effectively take 13. This is... Yeah, they're going to be attacking for more than 13. 
So yeah, uh, this is the only option we have available to us right now. I mean, the other option is that we just hope that they fuck up. That's it. Like, they, they could do that. I think that honestly hoping for them to mess up and put Crater Hoof in play right now is probably the stronger uh, win because if they do that, then Emrakul actually could win us the game. The clique can just block it. Uh, yeah, that's true. It wouldn't take a life, but um, what happens? I mean, yeah, or we can play Flesh Gorger and then play Batter Skull and just hope to go from there. It's not a great line, but that's also possible, I guess. Well, we have to we have to do show and tell. I don't know. Maybe there's some way to like do this if we actually like put the flesh gorger in. And then maybe we can play the the carnosaur and it'll help. All right, we'll we'll do this. They did not go for yeah. So all right, we're still technically in this, but. Yeah, we don't have to lose a life for this, so, like, we can survive Crater Hoof hitting us. And then follow it up with Batter Skull, maybe, and hope that that's enough. But it, it feels pretty losing to me, so, I don't know. I don't really have a good answer to this thing right now. No, that's Omnath. Okay, so they are choosing not to use Through the Breach just yet. Well, this is going to be bad, because if they attack, I have to block this, and then they're going to get to destroy another one of my lands. Scape Shift? Oh, fuck. They, they're the one that drafted Scape Shift. No! Are we just, like, dead? Do they have the Valakut? I guess we were... D I guess literally every card in their hand was, like, actually just lethal to us I uh, sure all right uh, there was not much we could do about it oh they have field of the dead all right uh no we are very much dead like They're going to make so many fucking 2-2s two with that. Yeah, it's it's over. Alright. Uh, I don't really feel like any of this is going to help us, so let's go. They already know our tricks, and uh, we know they have Mystic Confluence. Uh, well, we have sneak attack and some land, so I guess this is good enough. This, yeah, we're not reasonably going to do better than that, so. And we have faithless looting, so we can actually just uh, cast it right away. Uh, I don't think I want either of those, actually, so. Next turn, we'll play talisman and then hopefully draw a land. I was, hoping, I was hoping that maybe looting could replace Counterspell with a land here.
I don't know. I when I'm playing the cube, I just like drafting stupid decks like this. Oh my god, I'm fucking serious. Turn one Ragavan. Yuck. Uh alright. This is not great. I like drafting random nonsense decks like this. Some some of them work out a little bit better than others, so. Let's see where we're at here. Mountain, so, sure. They play... Did they just change their deck from like <laughs> playing like Scape Shift to Express like Legacy Delver now all of a sudden? Like what's going on? Oh, hold on. All right, we just need the turn to come back to us so that Titan can get us there. we can find another red source we can put in both of these nonsense guys and we still have counter spell up so that would be really cool but yeah triplicate titan is exactly what we want to be sneak attacking right now create something to put in front of ragavan they exiled island okay great uh we get to untap which means we probably just win this game All right, good luck, opponent. So the Carnosaur is coming next turn, so it's going to be really hard for you to deal with this. Sweet, we got there. All right. Can we do it on the draw? That seems to be like the hardest part right now. Hmm. Uh, I don't think that this is good enough. I don't, it's close. Like, like we don't have looting in turn one. I feel like we mulligan this and just hope to try to find it a little bit better. Uh, we have sneak attack and yeah, I think this is fine. Probably just get rid of... The intuition could find a land. I think we just get rid of frantic search actually. I mean, Belmont's not, like, the worst thing to play here, to be honest. It's a nice backup for when our hand is empty. Alright, uh, Steam Vents. <clears throat> like...
I mean, that's exactly the thing, though. It doesn't look like it's doing anything, but really what it's sitting there doing is amassing cards. So by the time that we're done with, like, trying to do this nonsense, then we can, uh, yeah, the rest of this can come out. Like, it looks very much to me like they have a counter spell or something up here, so... Perhaps the correct thing to do is just intuition for, like, clique, counterspell, and misdirection. Sure. Yeah, like they're. I I think that they're absolutely holding up something. So I we can afford to be a little bit patient. We want counterspell, miscalculation, and uh, where's Vendillion Click here? I'm happy with any one of these that they give me. They gave me miscalculation, okay. This tells me that maybe what they have is counterspell. Time warp is actually not bad. Um, I guess just... Play forest here. Look at this. It has, it's like has four cards underneath it right now. So yeah, that show. Yeah, you're correct. I should have actually been paying attention to that. That's important. But yeah, show and tell. The very likely could be one of these. If they if I would draw any more cards, I don't really think I'm drawing anything here, right? So sure, that's fine. I'm not gonna waste miscalculation on that. And like I'm not cycling it, so Ragavan with dash, huh? What does this mean? Like, I think I'm supposed to actually miscalculate this because if they pay for it, then that means they don't have a counter spell up, right? And if they don't pay for it, then we absolutely know that they have one. Yeah, I think that this is a good thing to use it on. So, like, if they tap out, then that means we can just slam sneak attack. Okay. Like, I can't beat a Force of Will if that's what they have, so we may as well just play around, or yeah, what we can, so. that They, they don't, they surely do not have, like, a one-mana counter spell. I don't think that that's reasonable at all. They found Bring to Light off of the Ragavan, sure, that's fine. Ah, uh, beautiful. If this resolves, we just, like, win. Like, just concede. You can't, like, beat this. There is, like, I guess if you have, like, solitude. Okay, no, brain. What what, do you, what, what are you going to find here? Ember, like, yeah, we, we win. Okay, we got it. We could. I, I don't think that the situation was going to get any better. Like, that was probably the best chance that we were going to find, so... Cool. We got we got there. The deck did it they did, did a win. Here we go. Our nonsense like combo deck actually won a match. <laughs> Mission success, people.
I think what this this event runs into like January sometime, right? So there's a very good chance that maybe next week I'll do this again. Yeah, January 24th. So like we might be doing this for the next few weeks because I really, really like Vintage Cube. It's so fun and ridiculous. And then maybe after that, um, I'm, I'm not sure. At some point, we might go back to playing Modern. That's, that's entirely possible. But I want to jam this while this is a thing because, like I said, Vintage Cube is just like one of the most fun formats on MTGO. At some point, I do intend to play through Golden Sun. I know it's getting added, I think, or at least I've heard that it's getting added to the Nintendo Switch is online library. So as soon as that happens, we'll probably start playing through that game. But uh, we're going to intersperse some magic back into our schedule. So uh, yeah, I, we've been on the play all three times. It's great. Uh, this, this is, I don't know, it's not like terrible. But we have four mana sources here. We have the Bring the Light, which finds the show and tell. But we need to find a fatty for it. So it's still like we need a little bit of help. Beaumont Courier is not like a huge thing, but maybe this is good enough. We're supposed to keep this. I am leaning towards Team Keep, so let's do that. We will play it off of the the forest, so we will hold up its ability just in case. Yeah, like chances are reason reasonable that we can find a fat creature to put into play with a show and tell. So we'll have we just need to draw one land and one creature. That's it. It's not that's not that bad, and we can find stuff like faithless looting to help with that too. Maybe Frantic Search. Shell Dock Isle. Okay. That's kind of neat. Uh, do they draft Doomsday? Is that what's going on? Or maybe Brain Freeze? I mean, I guess this card is a lot more, uh, yeah, it's a lot more reasonable to use fairly in limited because the deck is smaller. Oh, there we go. We have our, we have our creature, so. Uh, no, I don't need to pay for this. So we just need to draw, like, one more land. Or if we want to this turn draw a talisman, that would also work. And then Courier is just sitting here acting as a backup plan in case everything else fails for some reason. Alright, Sanctum, what are you doing? Scavenging is? Okay, so we're not going to be attacking for a little while. Sure. Intuition for a land, anybody? Uh, so we don't need to do it right now. Uh, I guess we can just pass and do this in their turn. Because I, and that also maybe helps play around like Force of Negation. Yeah, if they and if they, I guess if they have force, then they might actually just uh, hard cast it and counter this thing. What are you fucking kidding me, opponent? No, 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 we're not. What? No, 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 opponent. This is where I play the Uno reverse card. <laughs> no! What are you doing? Uh, alright, so... Chances are they're probably getting Emrakul, right? But 
we just get like Ulamog here, I think. Well, I mean, we have Ulamog, right? So already, so what? What do we want to get here that's gonna like really fuck with them the most? Like, <laughs> Emrakul, Sneak Blight. Oh, Sneak Attack is not a bad idea. Well, I mean, so the other option is I have Ulamog in hand, so, like, depending on what they take, I could just put Ulamog in play, and that could just be enough to wreck them. But I think that Emrakul, Blightsteel, and maybe, maybe, like, Wormcoil Engine? Oh, Ottawar is a really good choice, too, because if they put in Emrakul, then, uh... Yeah, I, I like Ottawa a lot more as well. All right, so let's take Emrakul, Blightsteel, and they, they don't want to give us Ottawa, so like no matter what they give us, it's going to be a bad choice here. Honestly, if they put in Emrakul, Blightsteel is probably not where we're going with this, though. I like Emrakul, and I like Ottawa, because Emrakul means we get to hit them first. Ottawa means we can bounce their Emrakul. So the only other option is, like, what else do we want to um, find against them here? <clears throat> like, because, yeah, failing that, we're just going to put in uh, Ulamog, right? Oh, um, no, the other thing we get is Carnosaur, because we want to kill Scavenging Ooze, and then the Ulamog will attack with Annihilator 4 and kill them, right? So, no matter what they give here, they're not going to get to keep their thing. Carnosaur, because that, yeah, that kills this, and then they only have four permanents, and then our Annihilator 4 kills them. We figured it out, chat. We got this. <laughs> My Annihilator 4 is going to be enough to get rid of whatever you have here. So they're just active. Like, they just won't untap with a board. That's it. If they give us Ottawara, we can just, yeah, we can just bounce, um, I don't know, bounce like Scavenging Ooze. Sure. They gave us Ottawara, okay. Cracked Jewel, okay. Yeah, that's a, if that's really poor, right? They drew three cards, but they're just like dead. Because again, Ottawa it just like bounces this, and then they are gonna lose this. Like I'm, I'm just bouncing ooze and killing all of, all of their mana sources. So like, what are they gonna do here? I mean, that's also true. Because, yeah, they're not going to have any... Yeah, they're not going to have anything, right? Because even if they, cho if they choose, like, to not sacrifice it, like, they're not going to have a creature to get it back with, so... Yeah, opponent's like, uh, ha, ha well... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I keep I hate it when it keeps resetting the size of the chat window here. <laughs> yeah, we gotta be really, really sure that our show and tell is actually gonna be what we want. <laughs> that clique is gonna be very important. Um, honestly, like I don't hate this hand. It does have kind of what we want, but I don't know. It's, I am, uh, yeah, I, I think that we're supposed to just keep this and then we can find, I don't know, something. At some point, dig through time will do a thing. Deep Cavern Bat. Oh, fuck. Alright, they're gonna probably take Counterspell now. 
I mean, I guess that makes sense. They're, they're, they may have a chance to show and tell before we can find a thing, so... Like, you 1,000% have to take Counterspell, right? Yeah. Because if your hand is based on show and tell, you know we have nothing. Like, this is your window to do it before we find something. That doesn't actually help us at the moment. Uh, <laughs> what we need to do is, like, intuition for three things, and then we can show and tell on our turn. Okay, well, they don't have it this turn either, so... That's kind of good. That means we have an opportunity to intuition in response to their thing. Now, we probably just get three fatties, right? That's the way to go here. Because we, we want, like, three fat creatures to put into play with this. Why why sneak? What makes you think that, like, sneak attack needs to be one of them? Because wouldn't we want a creature to actually, like, use here? They're only going to give us one of the cards, so... Uh, Corsair, I guess, sure. I mean, I guess, but we're still not going to have anything for it, so. We're not, like, in any particular danger at the moment. Honestly, there's a good chance they might not give us the sneak attack anyway, so... Yeah, I mean, we do also have Dig Through Time, which it's is eventually will find us something, too. Okay. And, uh, yeah, whatever they... If they if they don't give us the Emrakal, then it'll shuffle everything back, so... We want Emrakal, Ulamog, and then Sneak Attack, right? Like, and I think that if we pick that, then they probably just give us Ulamog. And we just have to ha hope that they don't have an Eldrazi. Dino sneak? What is like? There's I don't know that the Dino is gonna find anything that great. Dino, uh, yeah, I I feel like the Ulamog has to be better than the than the Carnosaur, right? Because if Ulamog attacks, it basically just kills them. Like if, and I don't know that the dinosaur on its own is gonna be enough. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Eldrazi's and the sneak attack. Because remember, if they get rid of, if they don't give us the Eldrazi's, then they're just going to shuffle back in anyway. So we're not actually losing them. But I feel like out of the three, the most likely one we're going to get is Ulamog, and even that is still probably good enough off show and tell, as long as they don't have like Emrakul. Because it will like, oh, oh, they gave us Emrakul. Oh fuck. Okay, so they really wanted us to get rid of those two. All right. Uh, sure. I, I don't know how the hell that makes sense. Like, unless they have, like, unless they have Emrakul in their own hand. Alright, let's find out. Because I guess if they have it, we're going to die anyway, so we may as well just play it. Uh, Triplicate Titan is not going to beat this. <clears throat> you kind of just gave me the thing that, like, defeats that, right? It is risky, but we're, we signed up for the risk. So they're going to lose six things, and if they attack, like... Well, if they attack with the Titan, like... They're going to get three three threes, right? 
Honestly, if they attack with the Titan, there's a very good chance I'm not supposed to block it. I mean, if we take nine, go to seven. No, they 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 can they have to sacrifice everything except one thing. So like, they could sacrifice it and get three three. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I guess I still do have to, but it's not great. So. I was, I was trying to do the math to think if there's, like, any chance. Because, like, getting rid of six things here would be awesome, but I think it is too much damage. We kill them in two attacks anyway. We basically just have to not die. And I think, it, you know, Annihilator 6 will get rid of, like, their two weakest things. So they could attack me for seven here. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, we might still be dead. Like, it, it's pretty close anyway. The problem is, like, if I do block it, like, them sacrificing it means that they get the 3-3. Three, three. So, I, I don't know. Maybe it's closer than we thought. There is no fucking way that not attacking is the way to go here. Okay, well, now we just win the game because we have time warp. So, whatever. We just got this. <laughs> No, I think that they absolutely had to attack with everything because that was the only way that they were going to out-damage me. Like, if they attack with everything, there's a very good chance that I could have died. Because I don't know, I wouldn't, like, they have to sacrifice a bunch of lands, but they still might have enough pressure because of the three three threes to actually kill me. Because I would still take, like, seven damage and then they may have enough stuff to actually, you know, pressure me. So, I don't know. It was possible. But Time Warp basically just laughs in their face and says, LOL, no. <laughs> okay. So they get that back. Uh, sure. Uh, no, I can't. I already played my land here. No, I, I have five mana. It takes two mana to use the talisman, right? So I, won't, I would only have four. It's okay. It's that, like, again, if they, at this point, it doesn't matter. They have actually just lost the game here because they didn't attack me, so... Yeah, they are mega dead, but let's just, uh just for shits and giggles. Let's do the time warp again. I target me. Alright, we win. Congratulations. We get 100 points back for that. So, uh... There we go! That was fun. We, uh... Our show-and-tell deck went 2-1. And honestly, despite, like, Death and Taxes being a pretty tough match, we were still, like... There were multiple points in those games where we were, like, in it to win it. So, it was possible to win that. But, yeah, it just didn't come through for us. But, uh, yeah, it was a really fun deck. So, uh, I definitely expect that we're going to be doing this again next week. I'm not going to do it. This ran a little bit later than I thought. So, like, yeah, we're, we're almost at two hours with this. But, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, we'll do more because Vintage Cube, like I said, it's, it's a blast. I highly recommend it. And the other thing is, if you had an active Magic account as of like, what is it, a week ago or something like that, you will you have one free entry into Vintage Cube, and I highly recommend that you use it. <clears throat> it's like in Legacy, Death and Taxes is a problem matchup for Sneak and Chill Forever. Yeah, they're just like, Death and Taxes is just full, a deck full of cards that just laugh at combo decks. Like, Thalia just like turns off all the Storm nonsense and like, Makes it hard to cast your force backups. I mean, it makes all your cantrips suck. I mean, Chalice of the Void just turns off your cantrips. Uh, you know, Containment Priest just like Omega laughs at your uh, show and tells and your sneak attacks. So, and they also have stuff like Flicker Wisp to like violin and just you know exile your cards for a turn so you can't like use them. Or uh, Skyclave Apparition just eats your sneak attack. So. You know, Wastelands and um, Rishid imports that can just, like, keep you off the mana you need to go off. Yeah, like, it, it is insane. Like, they very, very strong uh, anti-combo deck for sure. So, the core, yeah, it's the core reason Omni became... So yeah, because 
Show and tell in omniscience means you have a much higher chance a uh, chance of winning the game if you can just like cast your entire deck for free. Just you know, can trip your way into like casting Emrakul the hard way. So yeah, it's it's pretty good. I mean, yeah, and and it, I mean it keeps you in your like solid your red blue colors instead of like splashing the green for like Eureka or anything like that. Yeah, and omniscience is usually one of the most powerful things you can put in. I mean, there's also, like, mono blue versions that were running around for a little while where, yeah, you could play Omniscience and then, like, uh, what is it, Cunning Wish, and you get, like, Firemind's Foresight from the sideboard and then, you know, get a bunch of nonsense like that. So. Or, what is it, Release the Ants was another one. So. <laughs> you beat Omniscience because you saw, they saw 30 cards and couldn't find... Yeah. Well, I mean, that's statistically, like, almost impossible at that point. Like, you... Yeah, <laughs> If you go through half of your deck and you can't find, like, one of your, like, three or four of cards in it, yeah, that's pretty rough. So, and, and, I mean, it, sometimes it's even more than that because you're casting, like, preordains and, like, or, like, you know, ponders or brainstorms. And you're, like, sh you're cycling through even more cards than you would normally, so. Yeah, it, it is. that that That's absolutely nuts. But that's also a reason, like, not to concede, like, make them show it to you. How many times, like, you know, have have opponents in playing combo just been like, okay, I'm going to just win the game now. And it's like, okay, well, actually do it then. Don't just tell me you're going to do it. So actually, like, win the game. And uh, sometimes they just can't. Uh, my favorite story was, like, uh, who was it? There was, like, somebody who was playing, like, uh, ad nauseum tendrils or whatever. And the whole thing, they were, like, trying to, like, they didn't actually put the tendrils in the list. They were just like cast burning wish and, you know, just, you know, basically imply that they were going to get tendrils, but never actually have to get it. And your opponent's just like conceded the entire day, just thinking, oh, well, he's just, yeah, LSV, he's the one. Yeah, he just like cast the burning wish. Like, I'm going to, you know, you know, that GG. And they're just like, yeah, accept it. And then it's just like, he ends up making like the top eight without actually having the tendrils win condition in the deck so like yeah make your opponent show you that they actually can win the game don't just like take it on faith like make them you have to be able to see that they have the cards and that they're not going to like fizzle out because sometimes it just doesn't come together even though statistically it really should y you never know so we, yeah we don't give up in the face of danger unless we are for sure like gonna die <laughs> So, all right, that's all we got for tonight. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me. It's a pleasure as always. And like I said, we'll probably do this again next week. And uh, if you're watching the replay on this, give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you enjoy, you know, seeing Magic come back to my channel again. Because it has been like a really long time. I think like since June, that was like the last time that we did it. We've been streaming some of my favorite other, like non-Magic games in the meantime. And which, there will be more non-Magic games too, but, uh, you know, we haven't gotten there yet, but we will. So, until then, uh, that's all I got. So, I will see you guys next time. And then, oh, uh, you know what? We should probably go and raid somebody since we're here. Uh, you know what? Alright, let, let's see. Who's actually on doing stuff at the moment? That, uh, do 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 Let's see. Uh, I see. Uh, did it, there's arena. Oh, uh, you know what? Okay, we found somebody. Is there more? Let's go and watch some more cube. All right. All right. There we go. Start raid. Got this. <clears throat> the cubing will never end. It will continue for for everybody here to go and uh, see some more interesting nonsense. All right. I will see you guys uh, next time. Later, everybody. We're gamers.